Well, I wanted to start out today and uh, given the theme of the conference of Embrace the Race, I um, wanted to think through what it means for us as individuals who are involved in ministries that have a digital component to really embrace the race. And so we'll be looking at 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. Um, but I want to just start off with some introductory contents and say, comments and say, I think the world is becoming increasingly proficient at creating and disseminating stories that diminish God or deny him altogether. As such, we're faced with a situation in which the common knowledge that we're speaking into really points to political and economic and cultural solutions to the problems facing the world. Jesus is at best demonized um, and at worst sanitized. Uh, but he's not seen as the solution. He's not seen as the Lord. And so as, as we go about doing our digital ministry, uh, I think we're competing in a marketplace for the attention and mind space, not only of unbelievers, but of believers as well. And part of what we're going to need to think through is how do we mobilize God's people? How do we get uh, God's people to come together and really glorify him as one body? And so part of embracing the race, as I think about it, is all of God's people coming together to glorify God, to reflect Christ in the world, and to... Um, tell the story of Jesus in compelling ways. And so as we look into 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27, I think there's three insights in this text that will help us to sort of prod the church to learn to please God together as one body. So let's read this text. Do you, know, do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Uh, I will say I was reading that out of the English Standard Version, and uh, I'm recognizing my age because that was really hard to see. That is small print. <laughs> Going to have to upgrade, I think. Um, before I get into the insights, I want to just uh, give you a, a metaphor. And I know Chad opened last night and talked about his son's racing uh, prowess. My racing prowess is far less than that. Uh, I run Spartan races. Um, they're obstacle course races. And so I was in Jacksonville last weekend uh, doing a what they call a super Spartan. Uh, it's about a six, and six or seven mile race with about 25 obstacles in between. And so uh, throughout these insights, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm recognizing, uh, I'll illustrate some of these insights through the uh, race experience I had last weekend. And so the first thing that happens when I go to the race is we have to register. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're in the right race in the right heat um, that we're not, uh, we're not signing up for anything longer than we'd intended, uh, or I suppose shorter than we'd intended. And so when we walked in, we got tags around our wrists to make sure that we were going to the right place and we had the right start time. And so the first insight really from 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27 is, let's make sure that we understand what race we're supposed to be running. Let's make sure we're in the right place. Um, Paul doesn't really offer this advice in the passage specifically, but I think it's something that we need to hear. And he does talk about the race in terms of what we're shooting for. So we are shooting for an imperishable prize. The race we're running is the race that has that imperishable prize at the end. Um, it's a race that we're running um, you know, because we're called to be faithful in a world that is broken. It's a race that we're running uh, because... God has called us to it. But ultimately, it's, it's a race which means that we, uh, we run in a particular way, that we race in a particular fashion. And so um, we have to understand what race we're in. And our race is really won by being faithful rather than being productive or effective. Um, we have to be faithful first. And to mix Paul's metaphors, you know, it's a race from which we water and sow, but God produces the growth. 
And so we obey, and in doing so, we open ourselves up to God's use. And being clear on what ways we're running, then, is crucial to understanding the second insight that Paul offers, which is training for that race. Now, uh, as I got ready to run my six to seven mile obstacle race last weekend, I will admit that I uh, did not train well. I actually hate running. Um, I am not built to be a runner, evidently, and I don't have the sort of mental fortitude to be on the treadmill for much longer than about 20 minutes. And so uh, I ran this race, I think I ended in a little over two hours, but it was a grueling six to seven miles. Uh, every step I was just hoping that I had miscalculated how long the race actually was and that I'd be, it'd be over after the next obstacle. I did not train well for the race. And uh, that is something that we really can't do if we're going to embrace the race of the Christian life. And so the second insight involves our commitment to training. Paul talks a lot in this passage about self-discipline, about, um, about training so as to win the race, not just run the race. Um, I think my key insight here is we're not weekend warriors. I can get by running a Spartan race and not really training for it because nobody cares, right? I mean, it's an amateur race. Uh, I'm just doing it for fun and, and health purposes, and I'm not trying to win that race. But if it were a race I was actually trying to win, going at it the way that I did would not be a formula for success. I would actually need to discipline myself, to train, to move things forward, and to be prepared for that race when I got there to run it. I wasn't. But in the Christian life, and Paul's point here is that when an athlete trains to run a race, they're actually trying to win. And that's what we need to do as God's people. We need to train so as to win the race. We need to train so as to run well that race that God has called us to. So in addition to knowing that we're in the right place and that we're running the right race, we also need to make sure that in knowing what race we're running, we can train well for it. So we're not weekend warriors, we're not novice Christians, and our faith is not a hobby. We're professional Christians. And so we need to bring that expertise to us as we try to run through this race, uh, especially within a digital media world recognizing that we are competing for that attention, for that mind space, with platforms that tell a completely different story about God, about his creation, about, about people in general, that offer different solutions about the problems facing the world than Jesus Christ. We realize that this is the competition we're in. This is the race we're running. We want to tell that story, our story, Jesus' story, God's story, the gospel, louder and more effectively than any, anyone else. We want to be in that race and competing for that imperishable crown. So we need to prepare ourselves for the race by learning to observe the full counsel of God's word, and it requires discipline. It just requires simple, straight-on discipline. Every day we get up and we think about these things. We're constantly obeying God. We're constantly focused, and we're constantly moving toward the end of an imperishable crown. The third insight, um, and, and this, is, uh, this is something that Paul speaks about in the passage as well. He says, uh, I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. And um, the third insight is that we need, to be, we need to develop an unwavering focus. So we're in the right race. We've done the training. But it is still possible to get distracted on the course. Um, when I was running the race last weekend, um, I, I found myself, um, number one, really tired. Um, we were in Jacksonville, Florida, so really muddy. Um, they ran us through water and mud, and um, there were folks who were losing their shoes in the mud and getting stuck up to their knees and those kind of things. There were a lot of distractions on the course. It's easy not to focus on actually running, and you're just sort of watching the people around you. Um, I think one of the most interesting folks that I saw on the course, there was a uh, a group of people who were pulling a, um, an army veteran in a wheelchair through this course. And so they had him, you know, sort of tied to ropes and pulling him through the mud. And, and you know, you just sort of stop and watch that. It was just such a compelling image that I got distracted and just uh, took a step back and said, well, this is really awesome. I'm going to wait and see if they need any help. I'm going to, but I really just want to watch it. And so 
it's a good thing to look at, but it's also a loss of focus. I wasn't at that point really trying to run the race that well. I was just sort of being lackadaisical in that moment. And, uh, and I think even beyond that, um, it's possible to get lost on the course. Um, I can remember um, I ran cross country. For not being a runner, I do a lot of running. Um, but I ran cross country in junior high, and uh, I was not good at it even back then. And I got so far behind everyone else in the race that I got lost on the course. Um, they'd taken the flags off <laughs> to mark the way. Um, there, was, uh, there were some reasons that I got unfocused on that one. Um, but yeah, eventually my whole team was on the bus when I finally sort of moseyed into the, uh, the finish line. And uh, I think that was my last cross country race, if I recall. It was a that was a good that was a good junior high experience, but it does take unwavering focus for us to do this. Um, it, it's it takes us really taking a step back and saying, okay, if God has called us to be and make disciples in this broken world, if God has called us to proclaim His gospel to uh, a, you know a people who need to hear it, what does that mean for us? It doesn't just mean that we understand that that's our mission. It doesn't mean that we just train for that mission. It also means that we focus on it, that we drive it home, that we, that we do this with an intentionality and a, and a goal um, that is so clear and right in front of our eyes um, that, that we can't miss it. And so we have to have a clear direction. We don't want to get lost on the course. We don't want to get left behind everyone else. Uh, we want to have that clear direction, we want to have that aim, and we want to move things forward. However else we might say it, um, that focus really is to be and make disciples. It's to, it's to practice that pure and undefiled religion that James talks about in his epistle, um, which means visiting the, the, uh, the widow and the orphan in their, in their affliction and remaining unstained from the world. That is our focus. It's, it's witnessing to Christ in a broken world. And so these three insights from 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 26 really do um, highlight, I think, what we need to be doing as we look out on a world where the stories that are being told diminish and deny God with increasing effectiveness. And um, I, as I mentioned in my introductory contents, I think the worst case scenario is when Jesus is sanitized. He becomes safe. He becomes, you know, another kind teacher uh, like Buddha or, or uh, Gandhi or Mother Teresa or something like that. Jesus being sanitized is not good for us. That's not the story that we need to tell about him because he requires decision. He's not safe. He calls us to separate from things. He calls us to be a separate people. And so as we compete for the attention and the mind space of folks who are hearing these other stories. What we need to do is make sure we understand what race we're running. We need to make sure that we are trained and prepared to run that race. And we need to make sure that we remain focused on running that race well. We can't be distracted by other things. We can't be distracted by productivity. We can't get distracted by the issues of the day because at the end of the day, the world needs to know who Christ is. I think if we're gonna cultivate these characteristics and, and, and put these in, insights into place, we actually have to embrace the race. So unlike me, when I ran my Spartan last weekend, I wasn't really embracing the race, I was just sort of there having fun. Um, you know, I think the competitive folks got that race that I did in two hours done in something like 45 minutes. Um, they're embracing the race, <laughs> right? In that context, they're embracing the race. But for us, we are those folks. When we look at this as our Christian mission, as our vocation, as our ministry, this is what we end up doing to embrace the race. Um, we have to give ourselves over to it in a much more complete fashion than I ever would for a Spartan race. And we have to actually run well, discipline our bodies, have self-control, so that we run the race by walking in the obedience of faith. I think that's the real trick, um, that for us running the race is about faithfulness. It's about obedience. It's about walking well with our Lord. 
And as we do that, as we, as we learn to run that race by walking in obedience, um, I think we'll realize that we're not called to fix the broken world, but to reflect the glory of Christ in a world that is so broken only God can fix it. And our race is a race that's characterized by a trusting obedient, obedience that strange practices like prayer and worship or inconvenient service or um, loving, our, loving our enemies, um, they demonstrate our pursuit of that imperishable wreath that awaits all those who run to obtain the prize. And so as we sort of open this uh, digital ministry conference today, I think the important thing I want to leave you with is just um, our race is important. This competition that we're in is extremely important. Um, if we do not proclaim the gospel well you know, on, in our face-to-face -face lives as well as in our digital and virtual worlds, um, people will tell other stories. They'll come up with other solutions. And we want to be more than just another alternative out there. We want to be the driving force and voice. Um, we want to be a lean and mean running machine <laughs> that conveys the gospel to a world that really needs to hear it. So let's pray, and, uh, and then we'll kick off the conference. Lord, we want to thank you for the vocation that you've given us. We want to thank you uh, for Christ and for uh, the faith that we have in him. We're just grateful, Lord, that you bring us into this, uh, this ministry service. And uh, we ask, Lord, that we would take it seriously. We ask that you would uh, help us understand how to train, uh, put us in the right place, help us understand how to train, and keep us focused. Um, these tasks that we perform are not trivial. Um, obedience is never easy, and oftentimes it feels inconvenient or ineffective. And yet we need to remember that in the race that you've given us, uh, running that race means walking in obedience. And so, Lord, we just ask that as we think through these various, um, we listen to the various speakers today, as we think through tactics and, and uh, you know, programs and, and, uh, and all the sort of technical and promotional sides of this, that we not lose sight of why we're doing it. We're doing it because we're training to run a race that is absolutely crucial uh, to who we are as Christians. We're running this race to be and make disciples for you. And Lord, we just ask that um, you, would, you would use this time to prepare us as a time of training, that we might go out and, uh, and run this race well and compete with those who would diminish or deny you in the public world. We ask these things in Jesus' name.